learn how to read a contingency table. And of course, let's read it and understand it. What is two by two, two by three, four by three, and what is shells, what is a row, what is column, and how to come up with the expected value given the observed value. So let's take a look here. This is what we are recorded here, actually. Male, there are 50 male voted for Democrat. And this is, I'm recording this video actually two days before the election day on November 3rd, 2020. So, and I'm just, you know, my mind is working on uh, Democrat and Republican. So let's take a look and also independent. So male, how many males are voting for Democrat? 50 males. And how many males are voting, voting for Republican? 80. And female? 75 voted for Democrat and 45 voted for Republican. Now let's, this is already observed. So this one is called observed frequency table or we call it in this case you know contingency table in this case contingency table well it's, it has a more actually is coming up this is just two by two i'm going to show you another one with the three by three so well we read it how do you read it this is what we read it actually well it's going to be basically row versus column we always read it like that row so this case we this is by this is not time so row by column so we always go with the row first. So this is the row. As you see, this is the row is going. That is the row. This is the first one row. And this is another row. So this is a two row. Again, this is first row. And this is a second row. And therefore, this is going to be two. Now, what is the column? So I'm going to erase this and find out the column here. So this is going to be one first column and this is the second column. So we have first and second column. So also this time we have two. So two by two. This is this table, this contingency table is two by two. Okay, so we know the two by two. Now the next thing we should know the shells, number of shells. So since it is two by two, we should have four shells actually at least. So how do we come up with the shells? This is the number one shell, this is number two, and this is number three, and this is number four. Again, if there are more shell, we always go fill out those, and then we come out, if there are more shell, I mean, if it's two by three, we go one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be like that. So always go with the row, then you go to column. So row versus column. So R by C, row versus column. So we're going to have four shells. Okay, let's erase those. We don't need those anymore. So we understand what is shell and what is row, what is column. Okay, the next thing we look into, we are going to actually find the expected value, but how do we find the accepted value? What is the sample size? How can we do that? So sometimes this contingency table is going to be given with the total, you know, row total versus column, column total. So that would be column total. And this is the row total. So why not we just add this one and this one? Let's see what is coming up here. So we're going to add actually in this case 50 with this one. So 50 plus that we supposed to get 130, 130. And also we are going to add 75 with 45. That would give us 120, 120. So what is this? This is basically R total, R T O T L total, R represent row total. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go to the column. So I'm going to erase those here. Then I'm looking for a column. So I'm going to add this column, add this column, and let's see what is coming up. So 50 plus 75, we're supposed to get 125, 125. And 80 plus 45, also giving me 125. We're lucky we're getting very straightforward number this time. Okay. So then we are ready to get the grand total. So the number we're going to have here, I'm going to actually write it down here. So that number we're going to have here. 
will be our grand total. In other words, we're going to add these two. Clearly, it's going to give us 250, 125, 125, $250. So that would be 250. Or in this case, of course, it's not dollar, it's a 250 individual at borders, we should say. And this is 130 plus 120. It's also is going to be 250. So we add this one plus this one is 250. 130 plus 120 is 250. It's a very simple basic addition works out here. So this is called grand total. So this one here is called grand total. And we call this grand total as a sample size. Sample size. That's important. Okay. Sample size. Now, the next thing we do, so we have a most of the important important fees already. So next thing we do, we're going to find the mail. And of course, that is the observed. Now we're going to find the expected value. So how do we find the expected value? Expected value for the mail, there is a little bit work I can do on the right side actually here. So I can find, well, because I'm looking for expected value. So what I'm going to do, E of mail, M-A-L-E, mail with Democrat. So I'm going to have the column, sorry, in this case, I'm going to have row total, so mail. So mail total times the Democrat total over the grand total, grand total, over grand total. Again, I want to read it. So this is the mail. So mail, what is the mail? Mail is 130. That would come here, actually. That would come here. So 130 is going to be here. And D is the Democrat. So 125 would come here. And of course, that is going to be grand total here. So we have everything we just plug it in here. So it's going to give us. So 130, 130 times 125 over 250, that's the grand total. So it's going to be approximately, it's going to be, well, actually it's going to be exact. So if uh, I use a calculator, uh, it should give me 65, 65. Let's first time use the calculator and see what it gives me. So uh, 130, 130 times 125, remember I must enter here, divided by 250, some calculator are, you know, parentheses is very important with put a parentheses, so 65, or if you don't like to do it, do one time, you can do n over d, 130 times 125, and going down, 250, enter, that is 65 also. Okay, so 65. So then this one now we have, that is a 65. So that's a 65 here. That's how we know this is going to be 65. Now I can erase those. We already have that. Now I can keep doing the same thing on rest of them actually, uh, rest of them. And that will give me, this would be also 65. This one is going to be also 65. How this is going to be 65? I can do male total over Republican total. So 130 times 125 divided by 250. Again, I can also, instead of going outside, I can do 130 here, 130 times 125 over 250. And I can say, you know what, this time is going to be also 65. This time is going to be also 65. That is also fine. So instead of doing it all over here, we can do it right here in this case also. So 65. So, and the next one is female. So female is what? So we do the same thing. Female total. So female total is 120. Female total is 120. I'm going to put down a small 120 times Democrat total, 125, 125, 125 over 250, over 250, 250. And that will give me, in this case, 60. 
120 times 125 divided by 250 is going to give me 60. And of course, down here is going to be the same thing. We are lucky this time we're getting the same thing here. So female total, female total is 120. That's the female total is 120 times the Republican 125. So it's almost similar thing here. So 120 times 125 over 250, that would also give me 60. So that's how we find, that is how we find, I can erase those, I don't need those work anymore. Yep, so that's how we find this contingency table, then convert it into expected value, expected frequency. And this is a simple rule, a row total times the column total divided by the grand total. That's 65 and so on. Now, let's see, we can have more understanding with if given something bigger than this. So let's take a look here, we can do this or not. Okay, so I have one here. This one is basically given as a uh, male versus female. Again, same thing, Democrat, Republican. I have stressed this one into independent because we have so many independent also in this year election. So I'm assuming this is very small sample size, you know, falling, going on, or going on all over. So male, 50 of them voted for Democrat and 70 voted for Republican and independent, 10 voted for independent and female. 155 voted for Democrat and 15 voted for Republican and 20 voted for Independent. So what is the, how do you say it? What by, what is the row versus column? What is the row versus row by column? So we clearly see row is two rows by three. So we're gonna have how many shells? We're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six shell. We know two times three is six. We already know this is going to be six. So two by three and it's going to be six shell. And this one I'm going to actually not only create, not I'm not going to cre not only create the expected frequency from observed frequency, but also I'm going to show you how to line them up with the, you know, uh, expected and frequency. All right, let's continue. So First thing we do here, no matter what we have to, well, let's erase this. So first thing we add all of this here. So if we add this up on the right side, in other words, I'm gonna add all this 50, 70, 10, it should give me 130, so that's 130. We can use this, 130. Okay, and then if I add all of this here, 155, 15, 20, it should be 190, 190. So 190, then I'm gonna go to the column here this time. I'm gonna go to the column, I'm gonna go to the column that was the row total. So I can put down, this is a row, R-O-W, row, T-O-T-L, row total. And I'm going to have a column, C-U-L-U-M-N, column, T-O-T-L, column total. Okay, so I'm going to add all of this. It should give me, I'm going to go down here, 55 plus 150, sorry, 50, my apology, 50 plus 155 is going to give me 205. So I can just do the same ink, 205 here. And this one, 70 plus 15 is 85. 85 and also this one is going to be 30 so that's very straightforward it's going to be 30 okay good so we had almost everything what we need okay so the next thing that is going to be the one which is going to be the grand total so how do you find that grand total i hope you remember so you can do it and pause the video and do it. You can actually pause the video and do the whole fees and check the answer. So I'll, I add this up with any simple calculator, 320. Okay, so this is gonna be 320. So that is a 320. If I add this up here, this one plus this one plus this one is also giving me 320. Again, it's, if I add this, it's going to be also 320. So no matter which way I look into, this way is going to give me that's 
and also this over is going to give me that. This is the grand total. What do you call that? We call it sample size. Sample size. Okay. So what is the next thing we're going to look into? We're going to find the expected value out of this value. So expected value, we're going to mail total. So mail total is 130. So uh, again, first one I'm going to show you here. We're going to find expected value of mail with a Democrat is equal to mail total times mail total times the Democratic total times the democratic total so again that's what it stands for and that is the sample size grand total grand total okay so how do you do that so mail total i'm going to actually do the same trick as i did earlier uh mail total i add all of this 130 so that would be 130 mail total is 130 and democratic total is going to be this one is going to be democratic total and of course I have 320 is the grand total that goes down there so I can just substitute everything I can just substitute everything so 130 130 times 125 over 130 times sorry not 125 is 205 my apology is going to be 205 205 205 over the grand total 320 and that would give us approximately 83.28 83.28 so that is 83.28 so I want to make sure we use a calculator and see what we have so i can put down this one here 130 times 205 and down denominator 320 enter and of course fraction we use this double arrow 83 points so i'm going to round it 200th place so i can do it right in the calculator every calculator out there have option to round up so to enter clear enter now from now on is going to give me all those two decimal places hundredth okay so or even i can just do it straight forward with any calculator i can do 130 times 205 divided by 320 it is giving me 83.28 so that's 83 so again i did ahead of time and i follow the same process and the next one i get i got 34.53 and the next one i did to save some time i'm just writing this down so you can check your answers and this one is gave me 121.72 and the next one is going to be 50.47 and 17.81 let's have this all red color so this is called expected frequency expected value this is observed value this is expected value now i remember i said earlier that well i'm going to erase this here completely i'm going to erase this here Okay, so again, if you are not sure how we get this one, that's how we get this one. So we do basically a female total. So female total is 190 times, female total 190 times independent total is 30 divided by 320 grand total. That is going to give that number up there. Okay, so I'm erasing it again. So what I am going to do next is... Having the column, so I'm going to have three column or actually two. So this is going to be observed, O for observed, and E for expected. So 
what I need to have. So I observed that the first one was 50, the next one was 70, and then 10, then 155, then 15, then 20. That was my observed frequency. Okay, so I can have this also if I want. Create a table. Now, then what I have again, I go with this first shell 50, 70, 10, 155, 15, 20. I just put it under the observed. Why we need this? This is very important that we understand we built up this to do a chi square goodness of fit test. We need observed and expected. So, what is the expected here? So, this is going to be well, I need to have this one a little bit big actually. Okay. All right, so I'm ready. So the first one is 83.28 and 34.53 and 12.19 and 121.75. Fifty point forty seven and seventeen point eighty one. We need this table in order to find the chi square test. So I hope we understand how to read the how to read the contingency table. What is rho versus column, and what is shales, and what is the grunts total? What is the sample size, and uh, how to find the expected one out of this one and then list them in a column with expected and observed observed and expected okay so um, I hope you understand thank you